Today's show is different. Today's show is different on a number of levels, but starting with the fact that it's about my journey. Yes, it's all about me this time. No, I'm just kidding. It's a review of the Technics SL1200G. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> it's a direct drive turntable. And I never thought I would want to own a direct drive turntable. I was a belt drive guy for life. I've owned some of the best. I'm not going to give you the complete list, but I had actually two Lin LP12s, a Roxanne Xerxes, a VPI Classic, and lastly, an SME Model 15, all belt drives. And I never thought I would change. Belt drive for life. But then last year, in late, late in October of last year, I reviewed the Technics SL1200GR, and that set something in motion. First, because it had a detachable head shell. I could change cartridges in a minute from one cartridge to the next, from a Grado to an Ortofon to the MoFi to Audio Technica. And I just so much enjoyed, as mood strikes, changing cartridges. And I couldn't do that with the SME. Nope, just stuck with one cartridge, the Ortofon Cadenza Blue. But when I played the, the techniques, at this point, the GR, I was just having a blast changing cartridges and listening to different sounds, right? There was something about using it. The user interface on the techniques was definitely better than the SME. Now, not, the SME is a better sounding turntable, no doubt about it, than the GR. But that's what set me thinking that maybe I should try the next model up in the techniques line, which is this one today, the 1200G. But uh, they look nearly identical, the 1200G and the GR, but they're not identical. They have different motors, different tone arms, different platters. Pretty much it's a completely different turntable. And just to be graphic about it, the G weighs about 40 pounds, almost 40 pounds, and the GR weighs about 25 pounds. The, the GR's platter weighs five and a half pounds, and the G's platter weighs nearly eight pounds. So they look similar, but they're not similar. And they shouldn't be because one is four grand and one is $1,700. But later on in this review, I'm going to talk about how they sound different. Is the G worth the extra price? That's what I want to talk about. I just want to take a second to just talk about how it feels to play records because that's part of the whole deal with physical media is that you're physically interacting with it. You're taking the record out of the sleeve, putting it on the platter, putting the, there's all that to it and how that all feels is part of the deal. It is part of the deal and the Technics turntable just feels great. Now the SME 15 was a beautifully constructed, you know, made in the UK turntable. Just a stunning piece of industrial design, really well crafted, etc., etc., etc. But I prefer playing records on the Techniques, and that's what was driving me nuts. Like, why is this so? I was playing the Techniques turntable, I don't know, three or four times as often as I was playing the SME. Even though I knew it didn't sound as good. But I could change cartridges, and that was where this all set in motion. So I requested this model here today, the 1200G. Now in black, which is the model I have, it's called the 1210G. But from now on, I'm just gonna call it the 1200G. So I just wanna talk a little bit about the details of the design. I'm gonna put up all the specs and everything, so if you wanna get into the minutia, you can right there. And of course, you can go to the Techniques website and learn everything you wanna know. And there's a lot of detail, but I'm not doing that kind of review. So as I said, the, the, the arm is actually magnesium on the G and it's aluminum on the GR. The top plate, by the way, of the G, the top plate of the plinth is 10 millimeter aluminum. It just has a real high quality feel. And the motor design is what they call coreless. I'll put up a picture of what the motor looks like right now. Uh, that's pretty freaking special. That's not an off-the-shelf motor. I mean, Techniques has been making direct drive turntables since 1970. They did it first with the SP10 and then the SL1200, the original model, followed just a couple of years after. So they've been tweaking this technology for like over a half a century. 
Oh, one other detail about the platter that's really good, other than, as I said earlier, it weighs nearly eight pounds. It is a three layer design. The top part is brass, looks really cool. The bulk of it though is die cast aluminum, not machined aluminum, but die cast. And then the underside, the underbelly is rubber to damp the platter. Regarding the differences in sound between the SME15 and the Technics 1200G, well, it's a little complicated because well, the SME turntable had a fixed head shell tone arm and the 1200G has a detachable head shell. So in other words, I couldn't quickly go back and forth between the two. But I do know the sound of the 15 well enough to do some mental comparisons. And I would say, well, first of all, and most obviously, the 15 is a more transparent, more see-through, clearer sounding turntable. And the 1200G is darker, less vivid, less vivid sounding than the 15. And the 15 is a little livelier sounding. There's higher energy, higher contrast through it. Yeah, that's true. But there's something easier to listen to, something about the sound of the direct drive turntable that was easier to listen to. I was more at ease listening to the 1200G. The bass had more drive to it, kicked harder. You know, any bass heavy music had more energy, more liveliness, better pitch definition, it, more forward motion. It just was more physically involving to listen to the 1200G than the 15, which really wasn't what I expected. So that's the way it worked out. And I sold the 15, that was not on loan, that was my own purchase. So I sold the 15 and I'm pro I haven't yet taken possession of the 1200G, but that's almost positively going to happen. And uh, so the bulk of this review today, which is I think the really relevant part, is comparing the sound of the 1200G to the 1200GR. That's what I'm going to set out to do. Now, because they look so similar, one is black and one is silver, but the basic look is so similar. You know, mentally, I thought they could sound kind of similar, but they didn't. As for the comparisons between the 1200G and the GR, it was super easy. Both turntables have detachable head shell tone arms, so I could swap with the same cartridge between the two. And I used two cartridges over the course of this review, the Grado Platinum 3, which is a moving iron cartridge, functionally very similar to a moving magnet, and the Zoo Denon 103, which is a moving coil cartridge. The phono preamp was the same for both turntables. It was a Parasound JC3+. Plus. So what we were getting here was the difference in sound between the two turntables. Everything else was the same, the cartridge and the head shell and the phono preamp didn't change. So all I could hear was the difference between the two. The first music selection was this one, this Everly Brothers record, which I chose because it's a beautiful recording. It's an all analog recording. The, the mastering, the mix, the session was analog. Uh, and it's just a gorgeous recording. Their vocals, their harmonies are exquisite. Uh, and I could hear more reverb coming from the G than the GR. The GR seemed to damp things down a bit so that was, the sound was a little more smeared might be a way of describing it. Um, and it felt like with the G that I was hearing like a direct connection to the session, like this is happening now live. And when I played it on the GR, less so, more like a recording, less connection, less emotional connection on my part to the music itself. The timbre of the vocals was also just more complete with the G than the GR. Now the GR is a terrific sounding turntable. I've been listening to it for since October and really, really love it. But the G was just taking it up to the next level. More of, well, let's just call it a high end sound. And the GR misses some of that. It's not, it's not as complete. I forgot to mention this. The cartridge I was using to start was the Grado Platinum 3. So next, the next recording was this one, Bob Dylan's Oh Mercy, which is started out as a digital recording. 
Um, not a great sounding recording, but a really good. I love the music on this record. I think it's it's one of his better late stage, although it's at this point almost 30 years old recordings. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm listening with the Grado, and I felt like Dylan was was pushing harder. You know, he had more to say. I felt that more with the G than the GR. The music's dynamics were better with the G than the GR. And the bass line was just easier to follow. It bounced more with the G than the GR. Continuing, continuing with this one, with the English beat. This record is all about groove. It's all about the drive of the music. And yeah, you kind of know where this is going, right? The G just pushed harder. The, the bass, again, the bass lines just had more life to them over the G than the, what I was getting from the GR. Um, the music actually seemed like a better mastering job over the G than the GR. Because it just, I was, it, it felt like I was hearing more from the groove with the G than the GR. I just want to stop for a second because you can see where the direction is going, right? Uh, the G is a better sounding turntable, hands down. It's not a subtle difference. If you play these two turntables through a reasonably high resolution system, you're going to hear these differences. I have no doubt about it. But again, as I was doing the work and I'm looking at the turntables, I'm thinking, but they look exactly the same. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing, but they don't sound the same. And as I said earlier, they shouldn't because one is more than twice as expensive than the other. So, you know what they say, you get what you pay for. It, and it also did feel a little better. Now, the, where does this leave me though? Now, I have sold the SME 15 and I'm gonna buy a new turntable and it's 99% sure that it's gonna be a 1200G, preferably in silver and not black, by the way. And I'm feeling really excited and energized by that prospect because I so enjoy changing cartridges. I love the, the G and I love the GR, but the idea that I can go from Dynavector to Grado to Sure, whatever it is, and just easily swap out cartridges, something I have never been able to do as long as I've been an audiophile with all of my previous turntables, this just turns me on. Matter of fact, one of my friends, who's also a pretty diehard audiophile who has lived with this, um, not being able to change cartridges. Now he's probably gonna do it. So it's appealing. So if you're in that camp, that you have a belt drive turntable with a non-detachable head shell, maybe it's something you should think about. So uh, that's where it's at. I am excited about what's coming next because as I said at the beginning of this episode, this is my journey. And this is the next step in my journey of, is it a sideways move? Is it a backwards move? I don't know. I just know that I'm really enjoying the sound of the Technics 1200G. I think, I hope, it's gonna stick around here for a number of years. Speaking of sticking around, it is now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This one comes from Freddie. He lives in Margate, Florida. And uh, well, this is his system. He's a bit of a spawn action figure collector, as you can tell on the left side of the screen. Anyway, he spends many hours a week listening with his girlfriend. He thinks he finally has his system sounding just right. As for the system, his DAC is a Denifreps Ares 2. EQ is a Shit Loki Mini Plus. Amp, Cambridge Audio. AXR100. Streaming comes through a Sony Bravia TV. Speakers A are his own DIY LII open baffle design with a tilt back adjustment. And speakers B are the ever popular Klipsch RP600M. And the subwoofer, which I'm guessing he uses for both speakers, is a Martin Logan Dynamo 700. Thanks, Freddie. Okay, so we are back. You know, if you'd like to really help support the show, the best way to do that by far is to check out my Patreon and see if it's right for you. I will say, I'll, give, I'll tip my hand a little bit, that the top tier, because there's different levels to support that you can get through Patreon, the top tier, 
Well, they start at just a couple of dollars a month, but the top tier is $50 a month. And if you subscribe for $50 a month, we have a conversation for about 15 minutes at the beginning of each month. So that's what you get for the top tier. But the others, I'm more likely to respond to, to questions and stuff that you can email me uh, if you're a patron of mine. So that's a reason to do it. And they, you were charged for the subscription, by the way, at the beginning of the month. The other thing I'd like to bring up is, you know where I'm going now, right? Is my podcast, the Audiophiliac Podcast. Now I have a website for my podcast, which is, which is linked below. And by the way, the Patreon uh, connection is also linked below. But you can also hear the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and iHeartRadio, you know, places that podcasts pop up. Uh, if you like those, if you could give me five stars or like them or whatever, I would very much appreciate that. And of course, subscribe to them if that's possible on the platform of your choice. Lastly, well, if you dig what I do here, please hit the like button and also subscribe to this channel. And with that, I can say, yeah, my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.